guys. Welcome to Better Bachelor. My name is Joker with a face for radio and a voice for print. So today I want to talk about society chasing off rich men or just the, the top earners of men and is now going bankrupt. And then I have an article to read at the very end. Um, originally, I was going to read through, I don't know, a dozen articles or, show, or so to prove my point. Instead, I'm going to put the links over on, on Locals because um, that's where it's easiest to put links. And I've actually had a video removed here on YouTube for putting a link up that they didn't like, and they said it was, uh, but I won't get into that. Anyway, they said it was hateful and harmful, even though it was from a national newspaper. And so they gave me a channel strike about a year ago for doing that, and they removed the video, and I couldn't get the video back. So I'm going to put all the links to this stuff. So if you want to refute it and read down through it and have an argument with me, join me over there. But I'm going to read the headlines here so you can kind of see how I connect the dots to get to my data. Uh, incredible shrinking New York, new proof that progressives are driving away residents, including millionaires who pay for their goods or their goodies. And this is literally from yesterday. The overall summary of this is that 2000 millionaires have left New York alone. Why? Because it's becoming too expensive and they keep raising the taxes on the most uh, highest earning people. And those people are overwhelmingly men. The reason why I can say that, uh, I'll get to that in a second. Uh, New York is in trouble. Uh, 290,000 public employees with $100,000 paychecks just cost the taxpayers $38 billion. These are those middle crappy nothing jobs that are paying people two, three, 400,000 for diversity inclusion and school boards and all these other things that are a, a net draw from, from the economy instead of a net gain for the economy. These are the jobs that are going to be going away. Or if they don't go away, you've got to keep paying for them. And they're, they're driving us into uh, fiscal bankruptcy for the globe ever since we left the gold standard. But again, we'll get, we'll get in more on that. The reason why I can say it's mostly men leaving is they say that 33% of U.S. millionaires are women. Well, if 2,000 of uh, millionaires in New York leave, and, and I'll scale this up to the global, the global thing here in a, in a minute, 33% of millionaires are women. That means 67% of them are men. However, from uh, a CB, uh, CNBC data, there was a study from BMO Private Bank that found that about 15% of American millionaires are self-made women. So instead of 33% of women being millionaires, only 15% of them are self-made, which means the other 18% and they say it right here, got their fortune from marriage or inheritance. And marriage would include divorce, obviously. So that means only 15% of the millionaires leaving New York City are women, if, if they leave, which means 85% are men. But women overwhelmingly are Democrats and are on board with the progressive stuff. So are they voting this stuff in and then leaving or are they voting it in, it in and are happy with it? So worst case scenario, you could say 67% are men leaving. More than likely though, 15% are not income earners, they're just spenders. They're taxed on their money, on their investments and things like that. But only 15% are actually earning the money, self-made. The other 15 or 18% of women got inherited it. So then you start looking at 85% are men that are the earners that are leaving. And then when you look at this and you say, well, a good percentage of these women are voting for this stuff, more than likely they're going to stay. So again, these are assumptions, but you can see that the more assumptions you get, the closer it gets to a very, like 95% are men, but even worst case scenario, it's still the vast majority are men at 67, almost 70%. Cuomo, and this is from two years ago, before all the fleeing really happened, New York state is basically bankrupt. And this is coming here from the New York Post from, I think, a day ago. Yeah, two days ago. More than, this is the 2,000 millionaires fled New York. And at the time, here's the number I wanted to get from this article. Uh, they say at the time, they took $21 billion worth of income with them. That's $21 billion, And they already have a deficit. So they went from $6, million, uh, $6 billion deficit to $13 billion deficit. Then all these men left taking 21 billion with them. That's per year. What do you think is going to happen to New York? Well, now we need to scale this up to not only just the United States, but to the globe. 
We left the gold standard. We're a debt-run economy. Uh, we're a debt-run globe, really. Only China and Russia are starting to get back on the gold standard. And so what's happening is this is something that is expanding up to the global level. If, or, or, and at least here in the United States, I didn't do the statistics on the entire globe because that would be way too, way too much work for me uh, to try to wrangle it all into one video. But if you look at the United States, the national debt and our GDP, which is how much we're producing versus how much we owe, you're going to start seeing that what happened in New York has expanded and is happening everywhere. They just happened to write an article on it for the New York City. Men are being chased out of society. Men are being told you're not necessary. Men are being told if you're too successful, you make too much money, you're part of the patri patriarchy, and now they're coming for them. You know, the IRS just hired 86,000 new employees. Do you think they're just there to hang out? No, number one, it's a huge cost to, to us as taxpayers. But number two, they're gonna start coming through and picking through the wreckage of our economy to try to get every little thing they can, and it's not gonna be enough. And, and the, I have an article here that I'll finish everything off with to kind of sum it all up. It's not gonna be enough. And men no longer feel the need to support a family, to, do, to be successful, to do well. Why? Because they're punished for doing so. They're hired at lowered weight rates. If you're very successful, they're gonna tax you higher. And I, I was reading an article last night, I don't have it pulled up, where if you're unemployed and if you're, if you have, specifically if you're unemployed and you have kids, you make more than the average household income, which only basically pays you to become a single mom. But who pays for that woman? The rest of our taxes. And it's driving us into debt. So as more and more men opt out of becoming high earners, opt out of going to progressive cities, opt out of working very hard, and they say, you know what, the game's rigged kind of against me. A lot of guys are saying, you know what, I'm going to do just enough to get by. And what's that going to do to our economy? Well, we can already see how it's affecting things. And so what's happening in, in New York City is a microcosm. It's a small, up-close look at one city, but it's being duplicated in a lot of major cities. That's at least half the population here in the United States. That's why a lot of times progressives win the popular vote, but not the the overall vote uh, because of the electoral college. It was done on a purpose so that these big cities couldn't decide what's best for everybody, including who, who lives out in rural areas, but that's what they're trying to do. Thanks to the internet, you've got California arguing with Florida about some of Florida policies. Who the hell care, cares? You're in California, shut up. But this is spreading globally. And then if you wanna see how progressives are, are just literally killing businesses, look at the MCU for Marvel. Look at, look at uh, Kathleen Kennedy in her Star Wars. Look at She-Hulk. Look at Lord of the Rings, uh, uh, the, the, whatever the newest one is. I don't even pay attention to it because it was so awful. I watched half an episode and fell asleep just to check it out. What's happening is as women are getting involved in companies and CEOs and, and more businesses and places of power, companies, businesses, banks, financial institutions, government, everything's starting to go on what feels good what seems equitable, what seems fair. Unfortunately, what you do then is you take out the people that are actually earning the money, the people that are willing to get ahead, the people that want to prosper. That's overwhelmingly men. That's kind of what makes us happy is by being successful and making good money and being a, a, a boon to the economy and society, at least in the past. But now men are tapping out and you're seeing what's happening. The uh, last, last statistics I'll bring up and then I'll read the article is these are numbers debt by year compared to nominal GDP. And now we're at 30 trillion and 123, and over the last three years, 129 was the max debt to GDP. This is unsurvivable. It means we owe so much more than we're making as a country that soon we will not be able to pay interest rates on things. We can't even pay the, the interest rate on, on our own debt. And so what this does is that we're in a place now where we have hyperinflation. You know, the numbers, if you look at the actual numbers of inflation, um, they think it's probably closer to 30, 35%, but they keep stating the year compared to the previous year for that month. So they'll say, oh, in October last year, it was 10, we're 10% 10 higher. 
But if you look because of the lockdowns and everything, the year before that, they were up 8% over the previous year. And the year before that, they were up you know 5% over the previous year. You start adding this stuff up together, all of a sudden we've got 25, 30% over where we were just a couple of years ago. And, and that's what the government's stating. We know those numbers are actually false. So what's happening? We've, we're borrowing so much money that we're getting to the point where to stop inflation, you have to raise interest rates because that'll slow spending, cool the economy, and then the prices of goods come down. But what happens when you raise interest rates? You can no longer afford your debt when you're at 125% GDP. Our government will go bankrupt just trying to pay the interest on what we've borrowed. It's all right there for you to see. So either inflation will continue to happen because they can't raise the interest rates enough or they raise the interest rates and the government goes bankrupt. Which of those two things you think they're going to do? Or they put through a new, uh, a new crypto you know, thing and it's going to be centralized digital currency and they'll control everything you do and they'll say they can wipe out the debt and it's all good. And then one day you go buy, to buy your third pound of ground beef and they tell you you can't because you've spent too much money on you know, a product that creates CO2 or some other thing. How did this all start? It started by men being pushed out of the markets, women getting in control of things, women wanting to create things and help everybody in society and, and be damned the financial consequences of it. And we're going to pay for it. But, it. but it's all because of these progressive policies that are overwhelmingly driven by women and feelings. And that's how we got where we are. And that's why I say by pushing men out of all these areas, that's what's going to lead to our decline. And the last article I'll read here is a, a feeble attempt to make men care again because it's not going to happen. It's too late. Men have learned that they're only desired by society when society needs them or, or when society wants something of them. But other than that, they're disposable. Look at the disposable heroes every time a conflict between countries breaks out. Look how we take care of our vets that come back from these conflicts. Look how, how our military is spit upon or they're a joke. And, and then you look at how men are portrayed in the movies and TVs and commercials and everything else. And men are just saying, no, I'm good. I'm going to take care of myself. And as that happens, countries will decline and eventually crumble. And even if you have people coming in from other countries to, you know, like they're doing in Europe and here in the United States opening the border, these guys are not going to be, you know, no offense, but anybody crossing the, the, the border that can barely speak English is not going to be a million dollar earner in his lifetime or her lifetime or whatever. That's not going to happen. Really, all they do is, is create more crime in many cases, more homelessness, more poverty, which costs more money, which takes more deficit. And it just can perpetually creates this, this lower class group of people, which is really what the government wants because eventually the government wants to take total control. But they always forget where the money has to come from. And at a certain point, when you can make, like in these six or seven states, when you can make more money being a single mom or a single mother of two, you can make more money doing that than you can actually becoming an earner, then a lot of people are going to say, hey, I quit. I'll just become a, a, I'll just suckle at the teat of big government. And this is why socialism fails because eventually you run out of the haves giving to the have nots. And all of a sudden the haves are also have nots and they all rely on the government and no one can afford anything. And then they put in price control and the rest just goes down there, downhill from there. It's been tried many, many times. And for a small community, of you know, 15, 20 people that all agree on it, it'll, it can work. It can work. One per person you know, tends to the garden, another person fixes things, another person's your doctor, and you all trade things equally. But in a large society, it doesn't work. But that's what they're going to try again. So let me read this last article. They say men need, and this is from Restoring America, the Washington Examiner, which I think is pretty conservative. But, but what they don't understand is they're wrong. It's, it's too late. Society's given up on men, and so men are giving up on society. If you want men to come back into society, you need to appreciate them. You need to stop punishing them for divorce and child support and marriage and, and you know getting married and divorced. 
uh, taxing them if they're the high end earners. Until you fix the things that make men want to quit, you begging them for them to come back is not going to work. I just saw another article where now they're they're allowing people with ADHD and other mental issues into the United States government because they can't fill the roles, even though they've dropped the weight, you know, the weight requirements and the intelligence requirements and the male or female requirement and all the other, they keep dropping the bar so low that they will take anybody that's able to breathe. Do you think these people are going to do any good defending our country? But again, feelings over facts. Uh, this is again from Washington Examiner. Men need to be working and fewer and fewer of them are. And this is from just last month. Let me zip up the font here so you guys can read it with me. Men benefit from going to work every day to provide for themselves and their families, yet surveys and studies have cons consistently shown that millions of able-bodied men are not working or looking for work. They say the lack of working men hurts women too. One survey found that 78% of women picked a steady job as the most important characteristic of a potential husband. Women weighed, weighted this characteristic higher than sharing some uh, the same beliefs about religion and children. So what are women saying is the most important to them? Money. And you know what? Here's the problem. When I think it was Reagan uh, actually did the no-fault divorce in California back in like 1982 or something like that. I don't remember the exact year. Uh, what happened is guys are now saying, why am I going to, why am I going to, uh, am I going to work hard and provide all this money for a woman that may eventually leave me and take half of it? So marriage rates plummet and men worrying about earning for a family that goes away. You know, my father worked very hard and it was very important to him to give our family of four a nice home. Each kid had a bedroom. We had a three quarters of an acre property. Now guys are like, I, but I, I'm not getting that. I can't afford that. I don't want that. I'd rather have just a small studio apartment where I can go down the stairs and go next door and get a coffee and come up and play video games and hang out with friends or whatever. But what made that guy like that? The guy? No. Public education, single moms, the media, everybody crapping on him. So he said, I, I'm tapping out. Is there any way you're going to get him to care again? Probably not. Um, and they certainly don't care about, you know, having a steady job for the women. And, and again, this is a, uh, you know, men not working, women most affected type of thing. But women are the girl bosses. They don't need men anymore. So why should men care? Why should men try? Uh, they say currently married men who refuse to work hurt their wives and children. Do you notice again? Men who refuse to work hurt wives and children. It's always about what you give, what you provide. Um, one survey found that women with children under 18 years of age preferred being at home to working. Yeah, but they don't need the man for that. They just get it from big daddy government. Yet many men are wasting hours playing video games or watching television, setting themselves up for a life of immaturity. But I noticed they don't say anything here about women wasting several hours online with the TikTok and all the other BS. Again, men have stopped providing. This is a problem and it's men's fault. And this is, again, coming from conservatives. They're no better than the other side. They said men have a responsibility to wake up every morning and go to work to contribute to society grow in maturity and prepare for marriage and fatherhood. Nope, 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 and nope. I have, I have nothing. I owe society nothing. I, I don't have to work to, to grow in maturity. I need hobbies. I need good people around me. And I'm not saying that men should just F it and quit, but I'm telling you what's happening because of the way young men are being treated. You can't, you can't, kick a dog over and over and over and then say, come on, boy, let's go play ball and we're going to be best friends. Dog's going to look at you and bite you in the leg. What do you think's happening? What do you think's happening? You put men down, patriarchy, and they're bad and toxic and this and that. Okay, guys, come on, contribute to society. Step up and fulfill your role. You're going to get a big F you from men. And that's what's happening. They say a virtuous man, don't get into me on virtue. You're barking up the wrong tree. I'm not even going to read that paragraph. Don't even know what it says. Screw off. Uh, working even at a job he, uh, he does not particularly enjoy helps prepare men for the sacrifices of marriage and follow, fatherhood. Men don't want to get married. Men don't want to be fathers as much. Or maybe they do, but they see what happens with child custody. They see what happens with no-fault divorce. 
What kind of man says, I'm going to work hard and make a nice home for my family, and she sleeps with the guy, dude bro from the gym, and then says that it was my fault because I worked too much and wasn't emotionally there for her, and she gets the kids, and now what am I left with? No house, uh, paying ch uh, child support, paying alimony. I have nothing except my job, but, but now, based on how much I was making for that job, and I have to pay her alimony and child support based on that income, that forces me to make as much income. And if, and if that falls off, I still have to pay that amount, just I get less. Case in point, look at Dave Foley's uh, interview on Joe Rogan. He got divorced at the height of his career and he owes so much money, he can never go back to Canada or it's straight to jail for him. Women are not sacrificing anything. They're not. They're not. They're getting all the benefits and none of the punishment. Men are suffering that stuff. So of course men are gonna tap out. And I'm not saying that's the right thing to do. I think we need to be in a society where we wanna to give to each other and help each other and lift everybody as a whole. But when you look at men and say, it's your responsibility to lift this sinking ship and guys are like, yeah, but you threw me off the boat in the first place. Like now you want me to climb back on the boat and save you? I got a little life raft over here. I can climb on that and sail off into the distance. I'll be just fine, thank you. Uh, they say these benefits do not come from working, not trying to work, and all around being a lazy human being who refuses to l use their life for anything of value to themselves or others. Oh, you mean like all the women on TikTok and the single moms and the, and the bureaucrats and everybody else? Give me a break. And this is why, you know, so many times when, when I complain about things, I'm like, look, the left and the right are both bad. They're both in their bubbles, not seeing how the real world works. You know, we can say, hey, men leaving society is a problem. And I think that men need to step up and fix things. And men are the only ones that can do it. Men are going to be the only ones that save this country. I truly firmly believe that. But in the same sentence, I can also say women aren't allowing it. Society's not allowing it. They're putting down men. They're saying men are bad, men are wrong. And so men are checking out. And what this will eventually lead to is a collapse. And that's why I say it's, it's more important than ever for men. Yeah, it's good to care about society. I care about society. I'm good to the people I meet in the streets. You know, I'm, I'm not an a-hole. <laughs> you know, I try to be pr productive. I pay my taxes. It's going to be a lot of taxes this year because of the, the money that I won for the, for the contest. I'm going to be paying my part. What do I ask back from the government in return? Nothing. But here's the, here's the kick. What could I get back from the government in return? Nothing. So I'm a producer. And all the people that are taking from me and taking from men like me, like you guys out there, all the people taking from us are calling us the dregs of society and the bad people and the, the m m m misogyny and my toxic. And after a while, and I'll never stop producing, but I'll tell you this, I'm going to keep producing to the point where I don't need to produce anymore. I'm completely self-sufficient and more and more men are going to have to be selfish like that because society is leaving you behind. They're saying that you're the problem. And then they're going to, when things get really bad, and that's why they say bad times make strong men. But should the strong men give to society or so should the strong men just worry about themselves? I think it depends on how society treats us. If they come back around and say, hey, you know, for the next last 10, 20 years, feminism was wrong and we were wrong about you guys. We need you and we love you and we want to open you back or welcome you back with open arms. I think a lot of guys would say, okay, good. Uh, myself, I would say, hey, this is good. But there's always going to be that doubt in your mind. Are they going to turn around when things get good again and just throw me back under the bus? I think, a lot, you know, fool me once, shame on, on you. Uh, fool me twice, shame on me. I'll, I'll look out for myself and, and other guys and men and a community that is close to me. But if you think I'm, I'm going to keep earning just to pay more taxes so you can give more giveaways to, to the other half, that's not how any of this is going to work. And I think globally, we're going to get punished. We're going to get punished for everything that they've done against men. I just really firmly believe that. Uh, guys, again, I'll put some of these links down below the article on here on Locals. So if you're on YouTube watching this stuff and you want to read some of these articles, Join us over on uh, Locals and I'll have it over there for you and we'll see you in the next one.